Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of our Slack podcast. We are here to discuss how Slack can help you and your team drive better collaboration and organizational efficiency, making your work life simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. I am your host, Saif Alam, and today we're going to focus on how support teams in particular can benefit from Slack. To do this, I'm honored to be joined by Gillian Fitzgerald, who is our very own Director of Customer Experience here at Slack EMEA. And she's here to share some of her insight with us today. Welcome, Gillian, and thanks a lot for taking the time to be here with us today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are definitely more excited to have you over. And before we just jump into the matter of Slack for support teams, would you be able to give us a little bit of an intro about yourself uh, for our fellow listeners, perhaps a bit about yourself, your tenure in Slack, and your career up to this point? Yeah, absolutely. And um, as Safe mentioned, my name is Gillian. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I joined Slack back in September 2016, and so I've been here for just over seven years, um, so maybe a veteran at this stage. Um, and I joined our customer experience team at that point as an agent. And so I've had quite a, an interesting and exciting trajectory and journey at Slack uh, to get to my current role. So I always say that that's kind of my superpower is that I got to experience firsthand um, the agent experience. And so I'm incredibly familiar with uh, supporting customers directly, um, which has come in handy recently when we've had some uh, surges in volume. So I really like to um, be a leader who gets stuck in and, and knows the work. And um, that's something that I'm, I'm quite proud of. Um, prior to that, I, I worked in a startup that did Facebook advertising software and so um, built a team there and, uh, you know, support our product in a very early stage um, before finding Slack and, and heading on over here. So, um, yeah, it's been a great time uh, over these last few years. I know it's felt short and long at the same time, but i um, excited to still be here and to be continuing to grow our support team. Great. It's been quite the roller coaster, I'd say. Yes, pl plenty has happened in that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, so to to start kind of wading into the topic here, um, so how would you say that you would use Slack or how does Slack look like uh, for our own support organization here at Slack um, at a high level? Yes, good question. And I will say that over the time that I've been here, it has changed a lot. And um, I'm someone who likes to go back to the fundamentals uh, because I guess I have been here a while. When I first started, I don't think we had threads. Like I can't imagine my world without that now. Um, and so I think going back to the basics, I think the thing that's most important for me in, in our support structure is like channels and how we've set up our structures in that sense. So we have, you know, team channels, announcement channels, uh, collaboration channels. There's so many different um places where our teams work together. And I think back particularly when we went um, completely remote uh, during the pandemic and, you know, we already had the structures in place that made that happen very easily. And so that we could collaborate and work, you know, outside an office. Um, we already had teams based globally. And so we were used to doing that, but um, because of how we were structured, that really helped. And so, yeah, I would say the basics is, you know, in terms of channel structures, etiquette around, you know, how we post in those channels, our SLAs for responses in those channels. You know, we use emoji systems in terms of, you know, if something's a blue dot, a red dot or a white dot, depending on urgency. Um, we have channels where, you know, other teams can come for support. I think about our sales and success teams and how they can come to us if there's something that they need to escalate. We have workflows set up um, that allow that to happen quite easily. And so, yeah, I guess, you know, for me, it's the real time daily use that makes it so valuable is that even though I'm not working at an office with my team, I feel like I'm super connected day in, day out. And so obviously that is very important when it comes to supporting customers. Our agents need to be able to, you know, in a sense, swivel their chair and ask someone beside them the question. And so knowing where to go, how to do that, you know, where they can escalate, that's super important um, for us. And so that's kind of the basics, I guess. Then, you know, we layer on things like uh, we have Canvas uh, now for tracking certain projects and, and keeping things neat and tidy. Um, we use huddles quite a lot for co-working and figuring out um, customer issues together. Um, you know, as I mentioned, workflows, that's a big part of how we do things in CE now is, you know, we've built many different workflows. I think about our incident process and um, that runs very seamlessly thanks to a series of different workflows that uh, we enable. And so, 
yeah, we're, we're layering on all the time, but I always think about going back to the basics and making sure you have those structures in place so that your team know where they can get help and where they can um, get that information. Yeah. No, thanks. That was a very actually holistic answer to the question. Like <laughs> that was the model Slack, you know, example of how to use Slack. Yes. Um, and that kind of waded into my second question anyways, because my second question was about like collaborating and how that happens within CE. So you mentioned whether it's reacting via emojis or in the right channels or using workflows or jumping on huddles. And all that is for the point to kind of not replicate, but almost simulate in a way the ability and the ease of communication between your team members in the sense of being able to the equivalent of swiveling over to a chair and talking to someone. So that's great. And and I think we've all felt that over COVID. And for support teams, I think that's the that's quite crucial considering the amount of the volume of <laughs> of things that you guys have received over the past couple yeah. of years. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I said it already, but you know, you still feel so connected to your team. And, you know, I, I lead a global team. I'm based here in Dublin in Ireland, but I work with folks in Japan, in Australia, Canada, US, but I feel as connected to them. And I think even before the pandemic, I would have said the same thing that, you know, I felt like I really knew people at work, even though I'd never met them in person. And so I think, you know, having that space where you can have, you know, social connection, but also, you know, work connection, and you feel like you partner with people really well. I would like to say that CE collaborates very, very well. And we also, through necessity, need to collaborate with other departments and, and cross-functional partners quite a lot as well. And so, um, I think we've kind of nailed that. I would also like to say that I think CE are quite expert in, in how we use Slack and we like to try out new features and uh, areas of the product. And we really do dog food our own product a lot. And so, you know, that helps us obviously then when we're helping customers. But I think, you know, one of my most recent favorite things to do is like send a clip to someone if I need to explain something and or send a quick voice note. And so um you, you get a sense of people from that as well and that helps you collaborate more than you know maybe just a message in the channel yeah no that makes complete sense and cool so if i'd move on to my second question that i would have for you today would be from a manager perspective um i understand especially for for a large organization like customer experience or ce and slack um like being able to stay on top of things at and kind of a large scale is very important and including like things like running analytics or organizing this global workforce that you have um how would you say slack kind of helps you organize an organization of that scale and kind of stay on top of things yes absolutely um again i'm going to go back and say you know first of all basics you know we have our channels where we coordinate as managers where we you know, work with our teams, you know, I think for me, that's something that I do uh, a lot is, you know, making sure that folks have the right information in the right place at the right time and making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm communicating clearly and kind of having that communication strategy, I think is as well of like when you post, how you post, where you post um, is it, super important. I think the other things that I like to have are, you know, we can uh, pipe our data into channels or, you know, pipe dashboards into our channels so that you can get a quick scan first thing on a Monday morning to see like, okay, how did things go last week? Um, we also have things like ticket alerts. Um, so, you know, if a ticket's about to hit an SLA, we get an alert and channel, a manager can jump on and quickly, you know, um, act on that with their team. So there's lots of different ways that you can like integrate, I guess, with other tools. I think of things like, um, you know, expenses or um, absent requests, like they're piping in through um, Slack as well. You can quickly hit approve and, and move on with your day rather than needing to leave Slack. And so there's lots of different, I guess, maybe hacks that I have that, you know, help me in my day as a manager. Um, but really it comes back again to that communication strategy with the team and like having that um, constant communication, those places where we can help. I think the other thing that I really enjoy as a manager and not in a micromanagey way, but it, I love having the visibility of what my team are doing so that I can support or I can lean in where I need to, or else I know like, hey, that person's doing a great job. I can give them some recognition. You mm -hmm. have that visibility of what people are discussing projects, progress, you know, we see our teams jumping in to, to help customers. So it's really nice to be able to see that both for the recognition piece, for the coaching, um, to be able to jump in and support. I love to just jump in in random threads and say, you know, uh, offer some nuggets maybe from my uh, time at Slack. And so, 
Yeah, I think that's the other piece for me when I think about managers at scale. I know it's hard to be in many different channels and many different threads, but just having that option is, is really, really great. Well, and like from it does make sense to think that from what you're saying, I'm getting that the core of what makes this work well for you and for you, I mean, like you, the CEO organization is having good etiquette from the collaboration perspective. It's having the right channels for the right topics and knowing and people knowing where to post when and why. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's so important and it is, it's very basic, but it's kind of the, the foundation of how I like to work with my teams as well. And um, within CE, we have several different specialist groups. We have, you know, uh, our ops team, we have uh, our product specialist team. So there's there's lots of different teams and it's quite a big ecosystem within our customer experience team. And so having that, you know, those systems in place or those processes in place makes it easy for our team. And when I think about someone, you know, onboarding into our team, you know, just even the fact that we're so close to the product team, you have access to all this, you know, history of in Slack, you know, I love just saying like, go search, like you'll find what you're looking for if you search hard enough in Slack. And um, I think that's the key for me is just like making it easy for people to do those things um, and to be able to access that information. Yeah. And so you mentioned throughout as well, through your through your answer, you mentioned a little bit about some integrations, which you use almost like hacks or shortcuts for, for, for getting things done. Um, as well as workflows. I know that doesn't qualify as an integration technically, but like, uh, would you mind telling us a bit about the integrations themselves, uh, whether it's third-party app integrations or maybe some in-house workflows that you that you guys use to kind of help streamline this process of communication that you've been highlighting? Yeah, absolutely. And so I mentioned already, like we have our ticketing system integrated into Slack. And so, you know, that will pipe uh, different things in. So maybe a ticket, as I said, an alert around, hey, this ticket's about to breach SLA, you know, let's get someone on there. Um, I think the other things we have are like our CSAT uh, surveys. And I think one of my favorite channels actually at Slack is um, our live support team has a CSAT channel that, you know, pipes in directly the survey results. And that team really celebrates, you know, hey, we got a positive comment and they get, they get a lot of positive comments, thankfully, but, um, or they, you know, if there's something that could be improved, if there's something that, hey, a customer gave us this feedback, they will all swarm on that and they'll like review it together. And so I think there's so many great things that you can do both in the sense of learning and getting better in our work, but also that creates a sense of kind of camaraderie and uh, team there as well. Um, in terms of workflows, <laughs> there's there's tons. I, I think I called out our incident process earlier and um, our instant lead, like they've created some great workflows in terms of that process and making sure that that works as seamlessly as possible. Um, we have workflows as a, as a manager, we have things that, you know, if an agent's out sick, they can pop in a workflow. And um, we have visibility then as a group of managers where you can kind of uh, update the re relevant um, things that need to be done. Um, we have we have tons, I, again, our live support team, they have ones where, you know, they'll submit where they need maybe a manager to act on, you know, a, a certain task, you know, for billing or for something. and and. Uh, it means that they can stay on the chat and get that action taken care of um, in real time. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot. Um, I think workflows are probably one of our most used uh, things. We do have lots of, um, I guess, like custom and um, third party integrations as well that our, our tech ops team are great. They've really kind of found ways to, to get creative and make things work for us at Slack, but um, I'm going to admit I'm not super technical, so I won't go into the ins and outs of that, but there are lots of different ways that they have built things for us that make it really easy. Or, you know, we have a change proposal process as well. So if someone wants to make some updates um, to our operations, we have, you know, again, a workflow where they can submit that. So there's lots of different things that we do that are probably um, useful for other support teams as well. But um as I said, I, I'm not super in the weeds of exactly how those work. That would that would probably need another podcast episode on its own. Yeah, probably we could we could get someone uh, to help you out with that. But, um, yeah, it's 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 like magic to me. Basically, I click a button and it it works. Things happen. Yeah. But yeah, great. Well, considering everything that that you can do within Slack, um, my next question would kind of be throwing a wrench into that and saying, what is something that you can't imagine being able to do well without Slack, considering your current reliance on it. 
yeah it's it's wild because sometimes you know we see that if uh we have a brief moment where slack isn't working um we experience that pain I think you know we saw that I, I mentioned earlier as well about like when we all went completely remote um yeah. during the pandemic I just can't imagine working this way without slack um I just, yeah, it goes back again to that basics of collaboration, that alignment, um, you know, knowing what one person is working on. So you're not duplicating work, no, you know, creating that system of communication, being able to help each other with information. I think when I think about our agent supporting customers, like it would be very difficult for them to simply work in our ticketing system and not have somewhere where they can go and ask for help or search for answers or, you know, directly work with the product team like I think that for me is is what makes it um very challenging and so yeah I just can't imagine having that day-to-day conversation that dialogue that support system in place without slack um and I know I've been here a long time so uh it's it's routine for me at this point but um I really just can't imagine it yeah no that's fair yeah I think a lot a lot has changed since everyone kind of since everyone's moved remote and come back again in the way yeah. we want. Absolutely. All right. Well, my last question for you would be, and it's a bit cliche, but what are the three Slack features that you would consider vital for a support team? I was thinking about this and I think I would need more than three, but um <laughs> ooh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to say obviously the basics are like channels dms cannot live without that simple structure i'm going to say huddles um i think they are a really great way to co-work um through tickets they're also great you know just hop on a quick huddle to have a, a, a five minute chat and then move on with your work um if something needs to be unblocked you don't have to leave slack um mm, third one Oh, I would say workflows. Um, I was going to say emoji there, and then I was like, that's probably not um, as high off my list. But yeah, workflows, I think, uh, uh, would be the thing that I would say we we can't live without because, as I said, we have lots of different things that we rely on them for at this point, um, and we keep iterating, obviously, as well. So yeah, I'm going to say those three, and maybe emoji as well, because they, they help with the channel DM systems and the escalation processes and so on. Oh, cool. That's that's more than fair, I think, and uh, yeah, I think those are those are key features that I think in general are like, and especially something like workflows. There, there's a lot in there. Once you dig into it, there's there's a lot that can be done. Yeah, I I feel like I'm very speaking very high level here, but yeah, there's lots of layers. There's lots of um things you can do. Um, yeah, i I'm, I'm learning from my team every day because they they get super creative with those things. No, that's great to hear. And we have a, we have an amazing CE team, I have to admit. Yeah, I, I know I'm biased, but I, I really do think they are. It's only fair. Like it's, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Jillian, for your time today. And I think I think we went through quite a few points and it's been great to see how how you guys have been kind of celebrating the success that you guys have been doing over the past couple of years. Uh, it is a lot. And as a, as a CSM in Slack, I get that. Um, but yeah, we appreciate you and what your team does. Um, and it was great hearing from you, how, how you guys, uh, how you guys use Slack. Yeah, absolutely. And likewise, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciated the chance to get to, to share some of this today and best of luck with the podcast. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks, Jillian. Welcome to your new HQ, Slack. Slack connects agents with the knowledge and experts they need so they can deliver fast, accurate customer support. Instead of having to juggle tickets, apps, emails, and phone calls, Slack lets your agents find internal experts, data, and historical information all in one place, a channel. Let's say a tricky ticket arrives from a key account. It's a billing issue, and it's one that this particular support agent hasn't dealt with before. In just one click, the agent can send the ticket straight from their ticketing tool into a dedicated Slack channel. From there, it's escalated to the right teams right away. Everyone in the channel sees an unfurl of the ticket's content, including people who might not be able to access the ticketing app itself. As tickets keep flowing into Slack, the company's knowledge base grows and grows, 
any agent can quickly search for a particular topic and find related messages, files, and resolve tickets. Agents can get immediate help from internal experts or managers right inside Slack channels. As colleagues swarm an agent's question, their Slack messages automatically show up in the agent's ticketing tool as well, so the agent gets the answers they need in real time without switching apps. And once the ticket is closed, managers can use custom-built workflows to provide coaching opportunities for agents. Agents level up their skills, and customers get even faster, more accurate answers in the future. Learn more about how your support teams can resolve customer issues faster and more accurately with Slack.